Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snellen coming to you from With One Accord Ministries. And this video doesn't fit in very easily to categorizing, but I would say it's, it's mainly apologetics, uh, the defense of the faith. And uh, we've had a lot of people ask over the last month or so about this um, ex apparently extremely popular TV um, series that's streaming uh, called The Chosen. And it's, um, I guess, correctly said to be the first multi-episode, you know, like episodic TV series to deal with the life of Yeshua, of Jesus. That's all well and good. But, you know, people are wondering about some things. And uh, frankly, so are we. So here's the deal. Um, Obviously, any time the, the life of Yeshua is presented, um, we can rejoice in that to the extent to which it is accurate. And I, I really have to say that, that they, this company uh, and the gentleman uh, whose name is Dallas Jenkins, who's the kind of the driving force behind it, have done a very good job. I used to be a filmmaker when I was in college. I don't think many of you know that, but... I made eight or nine big films uh, while I was there in the, in the late 60s and early 70s, uh, even won a couple of awards. So, you know, I, I understand the dynamics behind it, and I think it's very well done. I think the acting is excellent, music, et cetera, all those kind of things. But here's the problem. Let me say this up front. I watched the thing with Mary, my wife, and, you know, there isn't really much in it that is doctrinally amiss in the actual video, which is good. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of extra biblical material in it. And of course, some people find offense in that. I personally could have done with a lot more of Yeshua and less of, of some of these backstories, but that's just me. I mean, I just love him. Um, but you know, that's just, I mean, they apparently chose to do it this way and it, you know, I also think there were a few things that were kind of anachronistic. The dialogue was somewhat anachronistic. I mean, people using contemporary expressions, uh, you know, that are to used today that obviously were not used a thousand or two thousand years ago. Um, but there are greater concerns than that. And the concern that I want to, and I know I'm not the first person to say this, but as a former Mormon, I can kind of talk to this in a way that, that, that some people may not be able to. This Dallas Jenkins, who, you know, is an evangelical Christian, I have no doubt of that. Um, I mean, he, he says he went to a Bible college, or I mean, pardon me, a university and took Bible classes there. Uh, and, and, you know, while he wouldn't consider himself a theological scholar, he, you know, he obviously knows the Bible and he, he claims to have been, you know, somewhat trained in the understanding of other faiths. He says he took a course in comparative religions. And I, you know, he's a young fellow. I, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he looks to be like in his forties. And, you know, who knows what the quality of that education was. But I can tell you this much with all due respect. I mean, I don't doubt the guy has a heart for Yeshua. And I think that, that, you know, his vision, as far as it goes, is a good one. But along the way, he's kind of made a deal with the devil, literally. And that's what I want to talk about. He, um, if you watch the credits, for one thing, at the end of the credits, he acknowledges the fact that the sets and the costuming were provided by, quote-unquote, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is the Mormon Church. They don't like to use the word Mormon anymore, but most people understand the word Mormon. So that's one thing. But beyond that, you know, apparently he has received funding and distribution help from Mormon organizations, or at least organizations run by Mormons. Okay, that's different than the actual Mormon church. But still, you know, this is kind of an unholy alliance, and it makes me very nervous. Um, and here's the thing. He has done 
at least one or two interviews that are on YouTube. You can check them out. One where he's actually dialoguing with a, a LDS guy. I don't know who the fellow is. I've never heard of him, but he's some devout Mormon and saying how Mormons have been getting a bad rap from evangelical Christians. And he goes on, and I'm just paraphrasing here, you know, but he says basically he considers Mormons to be his brothers and sisters in Christ. And he says we worship the same Jesus. He says he knows there are significant doctrinal differences between the LDS church, Mormons, and the typical evangelical community. But he doesn't feel that that's a problem. Now, to me, that shows a woeful ignorance of, of what the LDS church really is and what they really teach. Or it shows a woeful ignorance of what it means to be a real Christian and what solid Christian doctrine is. And I, I don't mean to attack this fellow because I think his, again, his heart is in the right place, but I think he, in, in needing, wanting to raise money, and this was a crowdfunded uh, thing, this whole enterprise. I mean, he did not go to any studios, but yet, you know, after that being said, apparently he got help in distribution and, again, the set stuff from Mormons. And, of course, because of that, he's not going to bite the hand that feeds him. So he, is, he has gone on record in several places saying that he thinks he and he and the Mormons are brothers and sisters in Christ and that we love and worship the same Jesus, quote unquote. And nothing, friends, nothing could be further from the truth. And, you know, let me just start out with this. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. I'm sure many of you know this passage, but starting in 6, Paul says, and you might, you might very well say this about the Christians that are involved in this um, project, this movie. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the gospel of, pardon me, the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have received, let him be accursed. Now, let me say right up front that Mormons preach an entirely different gospel. I'm going to go through this real briefly. If you want the whole, like literally, you know, a vast amount of information on the errors of Mormonism and the historical stuff and all of that, we have a DVD called Mormonism's Temple of Doom. And it's the 2011 edition, because that's more comprehensive. We have two videos with similar titles. The other one's from uh, 1986. So that's quite a difference. That was the start of my ministry was that video. So, but to be brief, okay, first of all, the Mormon God, quote unquote, he is not a spirit, even though Yeshua said he's a spirit. You know, he said, God is spirit in John 4. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, the Mormons just throw that out the window. They say God is an exalted man, uh, kind of like an extraterrestrial Superman type being who looks like a human. He has all the body, they say body parts and passions that a human has. Uh, including the ability to reproduce without being too uh, indelicate. And he has wives. He has many hundreds of goddess wives up there in heaven and or the planet Kolob, depending on where you're reading. Because believe it or not, they believe that God lives on a planet called Kolob. Now, at this point, I would think most Christians' heads would be exploding because this is utter nonsense. And they they teach that this God... Elohim, which is a perfectly acceptable name for God, that he was once a man. And then he had to work his way up to becoming a God through obedience to the law of eternal progression. This is Mormon doctrine. And I don't know how, if this guy, you know, what he learned about Mormonism, but obviously it wasn't enough. And I did all this. 
I, you know, I thought I was going to become a god and have my own planet someday with the, the god that's the god of the Bible over me and that there's another god over him. Frankly, it's like kind of like a spiritual multi-level marketing thing which is probably why Mormons love to get into multi-level marketing. But <laughs> anyway, let me just leave that alone. The point, I guess, is that this is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is supreme. There is only one God, Deuteronomy 6, 4. You know, that's the like the cardinal verse of the Old Testament. Hear, O Israel, you know, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. God is one, Echad. And yes, Christians will say that that oneness manifests in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, but that he is one. And yet Mormons are essentially polytheists. They believe in multiple gods. And as, as I've said, that should be evident. So right off the bat, that ought to be a deal breaker. I mean, if I'm going to get into a significant business relationship with an organization that teaches that or with people that teach that, I'm in trouble spiritually. Even if I'm trying to make a, a beautiful, wonderful, what you call a TV series about the life of Yeshua, I'm in trouble. I mean, and I'm saying in all, you know, Christian charity, he's in trouble. I think he has made it, especially to go public with this, to say in a public interview that Mormons are Christians. Because, yeah, he's going to say, okay, I'm not a, I'm not a minister. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a teacher. This is a movie that I am making. It's not a church or a ministry. But yet, you know, Frankly, he he has a huge amount of credibility because of what he's done. Because unfortunately, a lot of people, including a lot of Christians, will go for this celebrity thing. They'll say, oh, well, this guy made this wonderful movie. He must be really spiritually astute. And then he says Mormons are like Christians. And that does a tremendous amount of damage to the cause of Christ, honestly. But let me go on. Because... Um, there's a video out there where he is saying, you know, we just say the whole point of this movie, that, well, not movie, but TV series we're making is Bible preach. We want to preach the Bible. And again, that's admirable. But the funny thing is, almost every episode of the thing is like 90% not in the Bible and maybe 10% direct from the Bible. So, and I'm not saying that the stuff that's not of the Bible is anti-Bible. I mean, it's he's just attempting to dramatize and to fill things out, and like the backstories of the apostles and some of the people who were healed. And you know, I mean, it's not the first time this has been done, but it's the first time it's been done to this vast an extent. And plus, he is he is outside of the venue, you know, beyond the frame of the of the TV show, if you will. He is talking positively, lovingly about a church that is an enemy of truth, that is called the Bible, full of errors, and that not only that, but the Jesus, you know, he claims he loves Jesus. Well, the Jesus of the Mormon church is not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Mormon church, for one thing, is not God. The Bible is very clear from the first words of, of the New Testament on to the book of Revelation that Yeshua is Almighty God come in the flesh. I shouldn't need to hammer that home. Well, that's not what the Mormon church teaches. The Mormon church does not believe Jesus is God. They, excuse me, they believe he is a God. He's a little g God. And they believe and I don't want to go into all of this because it's it's it sounds crazy, honestly. But essentially, to make it simple, he the Mormons taught Joseph Smith was the founding prophet of the Mormon Church. He taught, and it was followed by Brigham Young and all the rest right up to the very day. I lost track of who the guy is that's the current head of the Mormon Church. It used to be Monson, but I forget. Anyway, here's the thing: 
they teach that Yeshua is the firstborn son of the father with goddess mothers up in the spiritual realm. And that right under him, like his second under him is Lucifer. So Lucifer and Jesus are brothers. But of course, Lucifer went bad, both in, in Mormonism and in the Bible. But that's not what the Bible does not in any way say Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. Jesus is not a created being. Lucifer is. Lucifer is a creature. Yeshua is the creator of Lucifer. That's a huge theological difference. But it gets worse. They also teach that in terms of the incarnation of Yeshua coming down, you know, and being born of Mary and all that, the Mormon church, and I actually heard this myself from a general authority in a Mormon steakhouse, meeting house, um, that they teach that God the Father, because remember, he has all the necessary um, reproductive equipment, that he came down and had relations with Mary's consent, of course, with his daughter, Mary, to produce Jesus. He had sexual relations with Mary, who would have been one of his spirit children, to conceive Jesus. Now, again, that ought to be something that would set any Christian's hair on fire. That's really, it's not only blasphemous, it's kind of twisted and perverse and sick. But of course, this came out of the mouth of a guy who is obviously Joseph Smith, a sexual pervert. I mean, he, the first plural wife that he took was, um, I think she was either 14 or 15 year old girl who was living with Joseph and his wife, Emma. And he, you know, I mean, I mean, today that would be considered statutory rape. I'm not sure what it was back in the 1830s, but anyway, and then he went on to take another 27 wives. And of course, that's one thing the Mormons are famous for, at least in the past, is they have polygamy. And they still teach that. It just supposedly they don't do it anymore, but they will do it in heaven. And I, I don't, we have a whole video on that. I don't want to get into that. But the point is, it's perverse to say that the Almighty Father, the King of the universe, came down and had, if you will, incest with Mary to produce Jesus. Now, if if this Dallas Jenkins believes that that's the same Jesus as the Jesus he was taught as an evangelical Christian growing up, then he obviously lacks discernment. I don't think he knows a lot of this stuff, and I'm sure I'm not the first person who has tried to send out videos to tell him this. And, and we need to, because I think this guy has put his soul in peril. I really do. Because he, and I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into a whole thing about, you know, eternal security versus being able to lose your salvation. But when when you put your, and he even says at one point, you know, I, I can't think exactly how he said it, but he says, I'm going to sink or swim. That's what he said on this thing that Mormons are Christians. He says, I'm going to sink or swim on that. Well, that might be sort of a weird self-fulfilling prophecy because if he keeps up with that, you know, and, and holds to it in the spite of, I know there's at least five or six people, you know, various preachers that have come online and done videos more or less like this, except maybe to greater depth, warning people and warning him that this is perilous. You are endorsing people that are the enemies of the gospel. You are endorsing heretics. Mormons are heretics. They're the worst sort of heretics. They deny the nature of God. They deny the nature of Yeshua. They deny salvation through grace. They teach that you are saved by grace through faith after all you can do. So there's they're totally going against the gospel that Paul is talking about in Galatians 1 and elsewhere in his epistles. And he says, if anybody preaches something contrary to what I am saying, let them be accursed. The Mormons are a cursed people. Now, mind you, Mormons, for the most part, are wonderful people. They are their greatest advertisement, how nice they are, how they're, they're seem to be very nice. All the Mormons I knew were wonderful people. When I was in the church for five years, I was an elders quorum president. I'd gone through the temple many times, all that stuff. 
but they are. They're very nice people, but being nice doesn't get you to heaven. If you're trusting in a false gospel, a false Jesus, and a false God, and even, you know, even they deny the, they, they say that the Bible is not translated correctly. They say their, their quote unquote Bible, the Book of Mormon, is the most correct book ever written. And, you know, a person can get closer to God by reading that book than anything. So again, any Christian uh, who has any kind of theological education at all, certainly Bible level, uh, pardon me, college level, would know that if you deny the Bible to be inerrant, you're a heretic. I mean, that, it's that simple. And the Mormons are heretics. And this guy has, has, so to speak, gotten into bed with heretics for financial reasons. And to me, and I, I again, I don't want to judge the guy's heart because I don't know, but I do know that he has done a great deal of damage to the cause of Christ because there are going to be a lot of, of Christians that are not very well informed. And I, I don't know, I shouldn't say this, but I wouldn't be, I would not be surprised given the popularity of this TV series, if Mormon missionaries don't have that clip, you know, on their phones or their whatever, you know, they probably are going to have that clip. And here's this guy who's like a celebrity within evangelical and, and uh, I mean, Catholics love the film. Evangelicals love the film. You know, charismatics love the film, the TV, whatever. And they're going to show this and say, look, here's this guy who's this big time Christian, evangelical Christian filmmaker. And he says we're Christians. I bet they're going to be doing that. And if they do that, then the damage to souls is just going to be incalculable. And I'm sorry if I seem like I'm coming down kind of hard, because honestly, I, I personally was blessed by watching the film. I thought it was very good. But on the other hand, you can't do this kind of thing and expect to not get burned. And I, I pray this that Dallas repents. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of a miracle if he does because he's interlocked with these different Mormon uh, companies and individuals uh, that have apparently provided a lot of, of resources and distribution and whatnot. And the funny thing is, he, he said on the, one of the videos I watched of him, I can't think of the, the, I know the name was Angel of this Mormon company, Angel something or other does the distribution for the, helps him with that at least. And I just thought, look at Galatians 1.8. If I or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, let him be what? Accursed. So Dallas, if you happen to watch this, you need to repent. You need to, you know, renounce these things because they're going to drag you and your family down when you when you come into a covenant relationship with frankly a heretic or heretics and have stricken hands with them made made agreements and covenants with them the almighty warns you about that you are not to do that um anyway the point is you need to repent, and, and I would advise people to not, I mean, they're asking for funds so they can finish the next season. I wouldn't advise supporting this in any way. I mean, it's up to you. It's between you and, and your conscience and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. If you feel like you want to, you know, continue to give money to this crowdfunding thing for this stuff, but... You know, because I'm sure people's souls are being saved. I'm sure people's lives are being touched by this film. It is, um, it's very well done. It, it's, it's so tragic, but this is, this is what Hollywood does. And even though this guy is not officially a part of Hollywood, um, I think he's, he's somehow gotten bit by the serpent and I think he's interlocked himself with, I mean, I know he has a Catholic priest and uh, a evangelical guy and a uh, messianic rabbi as his advisors. Uh, of course, I'm fine they've got a messianic rabbi, but I'm not wild about the Catholic priests because they're just a whole nutter mess. And if you want to know about that, get our video, 
um, the Church on Haunted Hill, Catholicism, the Church on Haunted Hill. But I, I don't even have time to go into that. So, you know, and I didn't even have time to go into, you know, the fact that the guy that plays Jesus is a very devout Roman Catholic. Uh, is that an issue? It's not as big an issue because obviously all kinds of actors have played Jesus down through the decades. And, and I'm sure not all of them were, were genuine born again Christians, but the bigger thing I think that is this whole thing about the Mormon church. So I don't want to go on and on about this, but I'm, I'm kind of incensed about it because I know what it is to be trapped inside of Mormonism. And, and you don't even know the half of it, folks. It's an appalling, dangerous, satanic cult. And don't be confused by all the nice, sweet people you see, both in person and on TV. And I'm sure most of those people are very nice people. But there is a darkness within Mormonism that is soul-destroying. And if you believe their doctrines, they will take you straight to hell. Believe me, they will. And that was where I was going until the Almighty intervened and I got born again in 84. So on that more pleasant note, I just thank you for listening. Uh, I'm sorry if this was a bit of a rant, but, you know, I want people to understand that this, this guy, as well-intentioned as he is, has made a grave mistake. And he needs to somehow disengage from this if he wants to, you know, protect his family and his testimony. And that's what I would exhort him to do. And Father, I'm going to end with prayer. Father, in Yeshua's name, I pray I have not been uncharitable here. I, I, I think that I really want to pray for this Dallas Jenkins. I want to pray that you would touch his heart. And even though it would probably be at great financial cost, that he would repudiate his previous statements and break off these contractual arrangements that he has with various Mormon uh, business interests and production companies. Father, I also pray for the people watching this, that, that they would be understanding that, that this is a battle for souls. And that if, if, Father, if, if people are being deceived into thinking that these nice missionaries that go door to door, so earnest and sincere, that they are being deceived into thinking that these guys and ladies to represent a true church of Jesus, they will be in grave spiritual peril. Father, I cry out to you, protect the Christian church from false teachers. Protect the Christian church from a movie that's kind of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Protect the Christian church and the people watching this from being drawn in to what is a dangerous satanic cult masquerading as a happy little American church. Please, Father, help the church to get more discernment. Help individual leaders within the church to get more discernment. Help them to know their Bibles better. Help them to have better spiritual radar, Father, that they can discern truth from error, that they can discern a false religious cult from the truth of the Bible. Help us, Father. Save us, Father. We need help because so many people are being led astray. Ours is a very small ministry by comparison. We may reach, you know, thousands with this video, but we would pray that it would be shared and reach hundreds of thousands because people need to know the truth about Mormonism. They need to know the truth about their eternal destiny in Christ. They need to know that He alone, the Yeshua, Jesus, of the Bible is the only way to salvation through the cross and the stripes and the blood of Calvary. They need to know that. Help them to know that if they don't know that. Lift up our hearts, awaken our minds, fill our souls with your love and your shalom, I pray, Father. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your truth. Help us to embrace that truth fervently and completely. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you for watching this. I pray it's been a help and a blessing to you. And I pray it's given you some insight into the Mormon church that you may not have had. I also pray that you would please share this video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and also please pray about uh, supporting our ministry 
Uh, we are really struggling because there are more and more people that are in need and we're trying to help them and, uh, you know, what's going on right now in the world. So please pray for us and pray about supporting our work. You can donate on our website through PayPal and we also have a, a text to give arrangement you can do through your smartphones. Uh, so again, we pray for you, ask for your prayers and your support. And as always, I wish you Shalom, Shalom, in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Oh,